Today we're looking at the filter function formula in Microsoft Excel. The filter function allows you to look at a table of data and pull certain rows based on the criteria that you specify. So let's go ahead and look at the basic filter function. And so if we do equals and filter and open parentheses, we can see the arguments we have here. So the first is the array or the data that we're gonna reference. And so we can simply select this table. And then if we hit comma, the next one is include. And so this is gonna be the conditions that we're gonna to use to decide what data we want to return. And the final argument that we'll address at the end of this video is this if empty which will address if you do not have any results or have an error. So let's start with one condition here. And so let's just query if this quantity is greater than five. And then we close this and return it. And you can see that it returns everything except for this one because it is five. And so if we go back into here and change this to greater than or equals to, then it'll return all of our data and so we can also flip this around and make this less than 10 and you can see then it returns it like that next let's take a look at what it looks like to add multiple conditions and so to add multiple conditions what we need to do is add parentheses around our first condition and then if we want both conditions to apply, we'll use this asterisk to multiply, and that will return if both conditions are true. And so we could also compare the price and say if the price is over 600. And then we can see now that it's returning everything less than 10 and over 600. So we can adjust this here. We go to 20, for example. You can see all these are less than 20, and all these are greater than 600. So we could bump this up to 650, for example, and you can see it adjust just like that. Now, one thing you can do before we move on is if you change this asterisk to a plus, it's going to act as a or so it means if this or this equals true so if we do this we can see now that our quantities are either less than 20 or greater than 650 so this one for example is less than 20 but it's not greater than 650 and our 25 here is 100 so Let's adjust this to 800 just to make sure that it's working both ways. So there we go. So that quantity is greater than 20, but this is greater than 650, and so it is returning. So that just shows you how to use an OR condition. And so next, let's look at filtering by the product here. So let's go ahead and grab this product. And first of all, Let's go ahead and see what it looks like to reference a cell. So we could type in, for example, here, Apple iPhone 14. And so we'll go ahead and return that. But what's more useful potentially is if we have a drop down, is to refer to that cell. And so let's go ahead and change that to H3. And so right now we're having an error because nothing is being returned. And so let's go ahead and select something here. So now we see it is returning whatever we have selected here. So let's select Logitech. And there you can see that it's returning that row because it's matching whatever we select in this cell. All right, so next let's go ahead and look at using a search or filter based on some text. So first of all, let's look at if we are going to search this column for, let's say, Apple. So what we need to do in here is we'll use a search function, and let's just start with Apple, and then we're going to search for it within this column here. So it's returning a value error, 
because our search is actually returning a number. And so a number is not actually what we need. We need a true or false. So we need to add an is number around that. And so there you can see that searching for Apple and it's returning these three columns. So it would be useful is to be able to do that using a thing where we can type in here instead. So let's just swap out this Apple for our J3 cell. And you can see right now it's returning everything because our search is blank. But now if we type in Apple, you can see it returns just Apple. We can change that to Pro, and we can see that it returns those two Pro results. And then next, let's look at doing a date. So let's go ahead and grab this, grab this date column here, and do greater than or equals to our start date here. Let's make sure we wrap this with our parentheses and then times. And then we're going to do the same one, less than or equals to our end date. So one thing to keep in mind here is you can see I, that almost went too far. So one error you'll have, and I'll just show you real quick here, is if your arrays are not the same size, you will return an error. So just make sure that if this is 6 through 15, that this is also 6 through 15, and the same thing with this end one. All right, so now I have a different error because these are blank. So let's go ahead and fill these in real quick. And then it looks like this one went to 56, not 15. So there we go. All right, so we have our formula correct now for our filter function. And so we're returning everything between these two dates. And so if we adjust this to 516, for example, you can see now we're restricted to that date range. Now, another thing we could add in here as we wind this video up is potentially, let's say we go to 19 here. We have some results. Maybe we want to see the most recent at the top. And so we can actually nest this filter function inside a sort. And at the end, sort index would be the column that we want to sort by, in this case, date. So that would be number two. And then the sort order, we have the option of ascending by using one or descending by using negative one. So let's go ahead and do descending. And now you can see that the most recent is at top. And then finally, let's look at the error. And so if we take this, let's just blank this out. Let's start with a search, for example. So if we go back to our search, a number search, and let's grab this and then search in here and close this out. So let's say we search for something that's not in here. So let's say kitchen. So right now it's returning this calc error and it's saying empty array. And so if we go back in here, put another comma, we can see now this if empty argument, we could fill this with no results found. And then you can see now we get this, that returns. So if we put something in like pro, it'll return that. But if we put something that's not in there, so for example, product, then it returns no results found. All right. So that is it for today on the filter function. One thing to keep in mind is if you install the coefficient add-on, it will allow you to automatically populate this data from your other data sources, which will allow your filter function to be working on your live data. All right, thanks for watching today. Check out our other videos for more tutorials and more ways that coefficient can help you be more streamlined in your business.